Hi there, beautiful souls. Welcome and thank you for watching. I'm Gabrielle, retired medium in Germany, and I like to share some of my otherworldly experiences and insights. So this one is about where do you think dead people go? Where do you think the beyond is? And I'd like to illustrate that theme with a wonderful story of a client I had. It was a woman even a bit older than me, a very kind and loving person. And she came with some, uh, yeah, kind of normal problems. Her husband was falling and uh, she had to give him into care and she felt guilty and bad about that. And of course, whenever she visited him there, he was kind of uh, tugging her uh, astrally and uh, saying, oh, please take me home. And so she didn't know what to do and she felt um, worried and confused. And she had the idea, um, well, it's kind of expensive, but if I leave him there just one week longer, although he was begging to be taken home with her again, of course he wants that. Everybody has an agenda. Even if they love each other, everyone has his own agenda. So use your left brain, the rational logic one, for the purpose it is meant for. To look what's the agenda, what's the motivation of other people around you, telling you this and that and they want this and that. And even her own children were kind of um, tugging on her astral sleeves like... Um, Maybe you should think about selling the house. And in the background, when she told me that, I could feel and sense that they, the children, had their own agenda and were thinking of the heritage, the money, whatever, you know. It was not about her, the mother. Nobody was feeling like an empath does kind of automatically, himself into her shoes. She was overwhelmed. She was feeling guilty because of her husband. She had a lot of work to do around her house and her garden. And as she was already older, that was getting more and more and getting too much. And she didn't know how to manage all that. And then the husband, you know, so she was kind of uh, desperate. And, um, well, we had some more contacts. And already in the first session, I got that the soul of her husband is kind of leaving soon. And I never liked to speak that out, but I had to. So I tried it as kindly as possible. She was not shocked. It was kind of a relief for her to know, oh, it's not carrying on for years and years with him falling and going to the hospital or in care again and then coming home and then again and again. I had that story with my own father and it took years. So she felt some kind of relief and I told her, you have to care now for yourself in the first place, which is sometimes very hard for women because they are so trained to serve all the others, serve the husband, serve the children, and they are coming on the last place. So I told her, now it's your turn, care for yourself, no one else will do it. All the advice you get from your children or from others they're coming from their motivation and their agenda and I don't feel that any one of even your children and the people around you is feeling in your shoes and knows what you need now and is giving you the pure, the good advice. So care for yourself. And really just a few weeks later the husband died. 
Of course, she contacted me again and she was kind of ready to walk into that hole, which I call a false belief of now he's gone, now I'm all alone and I miss his embrace. He's, uh, I don't know where in the beyond and I'm all alone and I have to care for uh, the ceremony and what to do with the house, sell it or not and whatever. So everything was just crushing in on her. And of course she was in grief and it is necessary to grieve a little bit but not too much and not too long and not the false way about somebody who left the body but you know where have you been before you came into this body and where are you going to when you leave this body you have been here before your body came to uh, manifestation and you will be there after you left your body just like a costume like an old um, jacket that you just take off. And um, because I did not want to dive with her deep into the false grief, I asked her, well, where do you think the dead go? And she pondered a little bit and then she said, well, hopefully to the beyond or back to home to God or whatever. And then I asked a second question. I asked her, where do you think the beyond is? And she had to admit, I don't know. And then I told her, the beyond is everywhere, all at once, right here and now. Because time is an illusion and matter as well. So the soul is always there. It's like all the dimensions are stacked one upon the other, like uh, the levels of an onion. Only we are so focused into three-dimensionality that we don't get that fourth, fifth and all the others are here right now as well. And to give her a little proof, I used my instrument, the monochord, which is producing wonderful overtones. And these vibrations help you to get into an alpha meditative state. And I showed her the guided meditation to go into her own heart, which is on my YouTube channel under the name of Discovering Inner Peace Through Meditation. And she went into her heart. She stepped into the fourth chamber of her heart. And it is no coincidence that the ancients built their temples exactly like our hearts are built. There is a four chamber, a four room, and there is the main chamber called the Holy of Holies, which is the real sacred place, the temple. And that is also in your heart. Your heart has a four chamber and it has a main chamber. There is the connection with your soul. And most people don't even know what the cross really is shows to us so obviously into our face. It is the horizontal energy of this world, which is going from left to right, exactly how your brain works. And it's the vertical energy of spirit coming down from above and where there is the crossing point. The Rosicrucians put a rose. Why do you think that's there? And why do you think the rose is not only in Western tradition, but also in the Sufi tradition called the Queen of Flowers? 
in the crossing po point of the hori horizontal and the vertical energies that meet right within your heart, which is the center of your microcosm, the world in uh, small that we all are. And the macrocosm is just a mirror of what is inside here. There's a funny little story about the Rosicrucians, the kind of white magic faction of them where I studied and learned. Thank God there are others that deal with black magic and uh, abuse uh, the knowledge and the powers, but that is not my problem, it's their problem and it will come back upon them. So there was this story that I heard uh, during my time with the Rosicrucians that they sent a little delegation of Rosicrucians to India to speak to Mahatma Gandhi because they understood who he was. That forename Mahatma is not by coincidence, like most of our forenames are kind of the soul path in disguise, they are program, and you are following what's the meaning of that forename. And Mahatma means great soul. So this delegation of Rosicrucians came to India and met with Mahatma. And he just looked at them and said, I love that, that's so wonderful. He said, gentlemen, you know the secret of the rose, so smell. Isn't that fantastic? So back to the point. My client went into her heart and the whole time, even when we talked, I already saw her husband with her while she was trying to grieve and thinking, oh, he's somewhere, I can't touch him any longer, which is all false, although we perceive it like this in 3D, but it's not true and it's not the reality, not the real reality. So um, she went into the main chamber of her heart uh, where the sacred space of the soul is always awaiting you. And if you come in respect, then you get an answer. But if you come in disrespect, I also had a client with whom I shared that meditation and she went in there. And after that, I asked her, so what did you perceive in your soul space? And she said, nothing, there was nothing. And as I guide the people to say thank you, because it's always a good idea to say thank you, it's a magical word. You don't know what is the magic of this word. It's also used in the Hawaiian healing ritual, the Ho'oponopono. It's the, the third sentence you say. You say and constate, I am sorry without putting guilt onto the other or yourself. Everybody would wish any conflict to end good for all sides so it didn't work out and you just say i am sorry second sentence is please forgive me and the third is thank you because you say thank you when you received something you don't say thank you before you got the present you say it afterwards and the fourth sentence might be a bit difficult if you have a conflict with a person but remember we all have a soul or better the soul has us the persons that are causing the personal problems and all the difficulties on soul level we are all brothers and sisters and on soul level you can speak out the fourth sentence of the Ho'oponopono. You can say in that mindset, I love you. So that ungrateful woman who stepped into the main chamber of her heart after I asked her what did you experience, she said, well when you said uh, it's always a good idea to say thank you and already the way she was speaking, you know, 
very fast. That shows me she's only in the head because the soul has a different uh, kind of speed. It's much slower. That's why I speak slower, because um, I love to be in contact with my soul. The head is bam, 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 like a machine gun fire. And you're 10 meters ahead of your soul. So how can you expect to walk the right path if you're not even in contact with your soul? That disrespectful, ungrateful woman said, okay, so you asked me to say thank you. And I said, thank you for nothing because I did not get anything. So, wow, I was so shocked. And I thought by myself, poor you. With that attitude, what you put out, you get back. Even if I were your soul, I would have loved to slap you in the face because you're so disrespectful. And it does not wonder me that you did not get anything. Just trample in there and expect everything just flowing right into your mouth without you yourself moving a single centimeter or a finger, not doing anything but expecting everything from the others or from your soul without being open, without even opening your heart, without coming with some respect and asking for something. She just trampled in there and expected to get whatever, the big things, and if you don't know how to value and respect small things like a bird singing outside of your window or the ray of the sun that is kissing your skin, then you don't get anything there in the sacred temple of your soul and you don't have to wander. So back to the point, the wonderful, nice and kind client I had went in there and guess what? Whom she met there? Her husband, just two days ago, excarnated, deceased, dead, and no, I cannot meet him again. Well, she met him right two days after he was deceased. And they had a very loving embrace there with their astral bodies. That's not the touch we are used to feel, but you can feel it with your senses inside. And she came back with tears in her eyes, happy, and she felt gifted. And I asked her, what did you experience? And she told me, well, I met my husband and he embraced me and he was smiling and he was shining and he was all bright light and golden shimmering. And he gave me something. And I said, what did he give you? And she said, he gave me a golden key. But I don't know what that uh, signifies. What's the meaning of that? And I thought, Oh my God, he was giving her the keys to heaven. That's the symbol. So she's welcome in her sacred soul space whenever she wants to enter there. And she can meet her husband there whenever she wants. And in some other consultations a bit later, she even told me, with all the work she had to do in the house and the garden and caring for the ceremony and doing all the paperwork, she took out half an hour just sitting in her garden on a chair, doing nothing, enjoying the sun, kissing her skin. And she was thinking with a little bit of longing and missing her husband, of course, of his wonderful, strong male arms when he embraced her, that wonderful feeling. And then she suddenly felt him behind her in her back, bending over and giving her that invisible embrace. And she could feel his wonderful, strong male arms holding her 
That's really driving tears into my eyes. So, I hope you get what I want to share. You don't have to grieve for the deceased ones. They are with us. The beyond is right here and now. And in your heart, you can always have contact with them. Your sacred heart space of your soul. You can call anyone there whom you want to see or to meet. Deceased loved ones, your spirit guides, your guardian angel, Buddha, Jesus, Maria, whomever you want, because that is the magic sacred space of the soul, the divine creative space where everything is possible. Thank you, beautiful souls, for watching. Blessings, love and light for you all and onto your soul path. Bye.